With the playoffs on the line, the Chargers went out and dominated the Broncos on Sunday, and they've now set up a winner-takes-all game in Week 18 against the Las Vegas Raiders. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Lockdown Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade. Joined as always, my co-host, David Drogemeyer, and we've been covering the Chargers for over five seasons. We started doing our own Facebook live show, Chargers Domination Live, and now it's our fourth season as the host of the Lockdown Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Well, happy Victory Monday to everybody because it was a big one for the Chargers on Sunday. And thank you for making us your first listen after a dominant win by the Chargers. If you don't already, make sure to go subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms wherever you get your podcast from. But what a game from the Chargers on Sunday. They go out and win 34 to 13 against the Denver Broncos and not only keep their playoff destiny alive, David, but they also get the playoff destiny back in their own hands. Their fate is in their own hands now, and they have a one-game playoff basically against the Raiders just to get into the playoffs, winner takes all. But what a dominant performance. We knew that the Broncos were beat up, right? They definitely were missing a lot of dudes due to COVID, and we'll get into the game recap because there's a lot of fun plays to get into in this one. But for the Chargers, they needed this one. They knew going into it that the Stars had a line for them to get destiny back in their hands, right? And they went out and they took it. There was a lot of Rams and Titans fans, honorary Titans fans here for this game today. And uh, Dan showing off that epic shirt. That I mean, Step Brothers is my favorite movie. So I mean, my it's fiance pretty much got, got this for me. Some of yeah. the best one-liners in all of movie history. This so was a game to break it out for sure. I mean, yeah, the Chargers I mean, had to do it. It would have been really sad if they didn't win. So let's, let's enjoy this week while we have it. A giant win. Definitely going to enjoy it, but like I was saying, a lot of Titans fans, a lot of Rams fans among us Chargers fans this morning, they both got it done. The Rams by the skin of their teeth, the Titans yeah. in dominating fashion over the Dolphins, pretty much taking care of their business. So now the Chargers knew going into this game that it was time for them to take care of their business, and they were able to go out there and in all three phases dominate this game, put out the type of performance that you were wanting to see in a game to where you knew if the Chargers got the win, they were back in the driver's seat on their road, excuse me, on their road to the playoffs. Yeah, and I mean it's exciting, it's scary, it's the whole thing when you're talking about the Chargers. But for you know, living in this moment, the Chargers did what they had to do going up against a team that has historically given them issues. I mean, I think they're one in four out of the last five against the Broncos going. Yeah, and into especially Vic Banjo. Exactly. I mean, their defense has given Justin Herbert fits, but I think the nice thing today was you didn't see any turnovers. You didn't help their offense out and you really dominated in all three phases, David. And I think we really wanted to see what the offense could do. Denver was missing key players, you know, like Bryce Callahan. I mean, you just needed to see a much more solid performance than you saw from the first time around. And I thought Justin Herbert was good. I mean, he had a couple of dimes. He missed a couple of throws as well, but most importantly, he takes the record for the most touchdown passes by any Chargers quarterback in franchise history. He passes Phil Rivers in just his second season. I mean, 35 touchdown passes. Phil Rivers never had more than 34. That was in 2008. And just a totally solid game from him with the cherry on top being the 45-yard touchdown to Mike Williams at the end of the game to really, I mean, like the dagger was in and that kind of like pushed the dagger even further you know, into the heart of the Denver Broncos at that point. But Justin Herbert super solid and now owns a piece of Chargers history. And he did it in 16 games. Right. For all those people out there that, oh, it's an extended season, sure. he did it in 16 games, which is the exact amount of games that Phillip Rivers had when he did it. So, it, you know, that's why, you know, this means a lot. And Justin Herbert, ever the, you know, the guy who wants to shy away from attention or taking any kind of credit always – giving the credit away, always just saying, hey, it's an honor to be here, and it's an honor to be a Charger. I mean, this is a guy who grew up rooting for the Chargers, rooting for guys like Antonio Gates and Phillip Rivers and the Danny and Thomas and all the guys that we grew up rooting for. So it's got to be such a surreal moment for him to be now the Chargers quarterback and to really take his place among some Chargers legends, some Chargers greats, and be one of those uh, so early, so young in his career. And also the Chargers have – 
two wide receivers now that are over a thousand yards. So you got to give it up to Keenan Allen, who's just the model of consistency year in and year in out and year out, and another thousand yard receiver. Uh, in Mike Williams, who in a contract year, it could not have happened at a better time for him. So I'm sure right now, all he sees in his mind are Benjamins. I mean, hopefully all he sees in his mind are the playoffs right now. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, with Justin Herbert though, yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think that the dude's in his second season and setting a record like that. I mean, I was surprised that Phil Rivers never had more than 34, but I think it's just how easy, easy Justin Herbert has made it look like. It's not easy to throw 35 touchdown passes in a season, right? And I think we take that for granted a little bit, but to do it on a deep ball like he did, a nice, you know, catch by Mike Williams laying out for it. Perfect throw. Great catch. I mean, that was just great to see. And the Chargers had some moments offensively. I mean, running the ball, they didn't average out very well, but they had some positive runs. Just shut down later in the game by a lot of negative runs that I think really brought that down. But you have to tip your cap to the defense as well, though, David, because the defense came out and was really dominant early on, and especially when it mattered most. And the whole talk last week was like the Chargers, 9 out of 13 third down conversions that they allowed to the Houston Texans. And this week, you hold the Broncos to 3 of 11 on third down. And most importantly, David, when really all the chips are pushed into the middle of the table on fourth down, you held them to 1 of 4. And we'll get into those fourth down conversions later on in the show but I mean that's what really won you the game right there coming up clutch in those big moments well you knew going into this game that the Broncos were going to be trying to run the football they had a lot of wide receivers that were going to be out for this game so and also you know with Drew Locke uh, you're going to run the football anyway you know they're going to take a little bit more shots because he does have a a good good arm there but you knew they were going to try to get Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon going in the running game and the Chargers shut that down. I mean, yep. they they only averaged a little over three yards a carry between them. They really never got anything significant at any point in this game. The energy was definitely there. Uh, obviously, it makes a big difference when you have all of your stars out there and all of your you know starting you know lineup there on defense, and it yeah. really showed. I mean, they did a great job against the pass, but more importantly, you knew they were going to come in and run run the football, and you completely shut that down. And I think that was the biggest reason why the Chargers had so much success getting off the field on third downs. Well, and it's also what, you know, forced the Broncos, yeah, into those fourth down situations too, is if you don't get pushed around and give them those easy third down conversions. Now, I mean, whether it's short or not, you're making them go out and convert those fourth downs. And the Chargers made big plays, but I mean, Justin Jones was a monster, right? Nazir Adderley was a monster tackling as well. Those dudes deserve a highlight for sure. Derwin James, I mean, could have had two turnovers by himself, and that's really the only thing the defense was missing in this one was yeah. creating a turnover, getting like a pick six or something. I mean, that really is the only thing they didn't do. I mean, when they ended up giving up a touchdown, it was 34-6, to six, right? So that's a pretty right. dominant performance. Quarter. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple plays by Michael Davis where it was like, okay, that's really shaky. But yeah. outside of that, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. You know, that's a, a subject that has to be broached at a different time. You don't want to see regression, right? And when you have no. the don't turn your head thing happening again, that's kind of what I'm alluding to. Right there, but this again, yeah. yeah, and I think that the pressure, although not you know super consistent, I mean, I thought they got better in the second half and forced a couple of key drives for the Broncos to go sideways when they really needed it to. In the energy and things you were talking about with me before the show was much better this week and yeah. played such a huge factor in the run game. I mean, the charge were physical, they had the energy up front, they got some goal line stops where they didn't just let the Broncos run the ball in easily. And we saw some really soft red zone possessions from that defense in the first matchup. You think back to that Teddy Bridgewater walk in touchdown with three guys, not tackling him. Right. So huge performances, even though, you know, obviously they're missing two of their top three receivers and they had other things going against them. The chargers didn't use any of those excuses though. They just went out and they dominated and you deserve to catch a break after you have the game, like the Texans game, right? Where you're missing literally all of your stars, not named Justin Herbert for the most part and Keenan Allen. But we also have to shout out the special teams, though, David, because there's one player in particular, Andre Roberts, a 47-yard kickoff return and a 101 kickoff return for a touchdown. We'll get into that and all the rest of the biggest plays from this game for the Chargers. And a recap that we actually want to do because the Chargers came out on top and really just dominated the Broncos in all three phases. And, I mean, I think that's just – you can't ask for anything better than that. Oh, wait, you can. Yeah, an easy fourth quarter, which is something we'll talk about as well because the Chargers – do not get many of those. But another thing that satisfied me as much as, you know, taking the fourth quarter off on Sunday are Built Bars because Built Bars are my favorite protein bar. And I promise you, you guys go to Built Bar and look at all the flavors that they have. You're going to find one that you love because the thing about Built Bar is 
it tastes like a candy bar, but it's also going to fit on your diet, which is just something that usually doesn't exist in the wild. You can find it with Built Bars. So many great flavors to choose from. You can go cookies and cream, peanut butter brownie. You can go coconut, coconut almond, mint brownie. You will find a flavor that you like, and you can even get a mixed box so you can try all of the different flavors and figure out which one of the Built Bars are your favorite. But Built Bars are my go-to protein when I need something, especially late in the day if I'm trying to push through the wall at the end of the day, start my podcast prep after work. I eat a Built Bar, and it gets me through to dinner time, gets me through the podcast, and gives me everything I need. And it also tastes great, which for me is the most important part. You have something that tastes good while also being super high in protein, while being low in carbs, low in sugars, and you can even save some money on Built Bar right now. Guys, because since you listen to this show, you can save 15% off at Built.com when you use the promo code LOCKED15. It's promo code LOCKED15 to save 15% off at Built.com. All right, David. Well, we have a recap here. And I mean, some of the games that we've had recently, it's like, how do you even, you don't want to relive all that. But luckily for the Chargers, I got off to a fast start, right? And it was the yes. whole team kind of Thank coming you. together. We, we knew it, David. That was, you know, yes. one of the biggest keys on the cover of our Friday show last week. And it came from two different places, right? Because you have Andre Roberts taking his 47 yard kickoff return. What a way to start a game. I mean, you can't Gotta ask for it, much. Man more help if you're on the offense and then you end it with a three yard Austin Eckler touchdown but the Chargers ran the ball really well on that drive I mean they only threw I think once the entire drive yeah Yeah, and I mean it was just nice to see the offensive line clicking especially with Trey Pipkins getting the start at right tackle with Storm Norton having to miss the game and be like an emergency option for the Chargers coming back from the COVID-19 list and they just went out and did what they had to do which already puts the Broncos kind of not in the game point where they want to be. Yeah, I mean, the Chargers scoring right away is just absolutely what you want. That's that's how you want to start this recipe for this game. And the reason why special teams is so important, when you get a big return like that, it's like a shot of adrenaline straight through every single player on the team, both offense and defense. Everyone gets hyped up. Everyone gets that just, you know, that juice flowing after a big return. And the Chargers took that right into this first offensive drive and capped it off with a touchdown to where they really, you know, set the tone early. You know, they, they knew coming into this game, there's going to be a lot of injuries and a lot of COVID situations that the Denver Broncos were going to have to deal with. And, you know, they figured, Hey, we're going to be able to run the football. And they did that uh, with a lot of success, really establishing, setting that tone that they were going to be physical, that they were going to take care of business, that they were going to come here, come in here and be sharp. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and just the game plan looked really nice. The play calling was good. You get a also a defensive pass interference call and a little double move by Jalen Guyton early in the game, testing them, right, and making them think about the deep pass already in the game. I thought that was nice to see. And then defensively, you come out and you shut them down on their first drive. They end up turning the ball over on downs. You can tell they're going to be aggressive. The right at midfield, fourth and short, they put it in Drew Locke's hands, and then he gets in Jerry Tillery's hands and goes down to the ground because Jerry Tillery comes through in a big way on fourth down, making a giant splash play there to get the Chargers the ball back. And then right after that, it was kind of frustrating from the Chargers because you can't capitalize. You have a chance to kind of bury them early on and make them kind of trying to have to claw back into the game. You end up going three and out two yards. Patrick Satan makes a nice play on Keenan Allen to break it up on third down. Sante Samuel Jr. comes back after a defensive and offensive pass interference were called on the same play for the two, you know, two guys going after the ball. I, don't, I can't remember ever seeing that. That was super weird. Yeah, Corbin Sutton called for P.I. Sante Samuel Jr. called for P.I. All the Broncos fans thought it would only should have went against Sante Samuel Jr. All the Chargers fans felt like, you know, probably should have just been on Cortland Sutton. Both guys were getting physical. And, I mean, it was just a really weird play. But I like that after that, Sante Samuel Jr. on third down comes back and breaks up a pass because that's the one thing you've seen so early in his career is just, the dude makes plays on the football. Like he's around the ball and he's well, going to make he's a resilient play. too. He just doesn't, uh, he doesn't let a bad play kind of mess him up. He has a very, you know, uh, he has a closers mentality. You know, you make an error, you're going to erase it, go back out there and, and, you know, play again and, and have a new play. And that's what he does a great job of. He, he really bounces back quickly. And that's really, really uh, essential for a corner. Yeah, I mean, they're supposed to have the memory of a goldfish, right? So yeah. <laughs> he, he definitely has that, and he has the dog in him to go fight for the football, too. And on yeah. that series, though, Drew Locke also got hurt, which means Brett Rippon came in and ended up going three and out near his goal line after the Chargers went three and out again. The back-to-back three and outs, I mean, that'll probably be part of what went wrong tomorrow just because I yeah. just didn't like the sequences there. Herbert can't connect with Keenan Allen on, on third down, or second and third down, really, but has a diving catch that would have been called back by a holding call that he ends up dropping. So 
It's just ugly for the Chargers on those possessions, and the Chargers get lucky that you know Brett Rippon is in at that point. Broncos go three and out, and the Chargers on their next drive. This was a frustrating moment because they go 14 plays, 69 yards. They get a field goal, right? They had a nice offensive drive. They move the football. They get a field goal to make it 10-0. to zero. They don't go for it, though, on fourth down. And the thing I didn't like about that is I thought they should have went for it to make it 14-0. Brandon Staley talked about it. He said, hey, I thought it was a possessions game. So in those moments, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go up by two possessions and make them chase me two possessions. I'm going to yeah. make it a 17-point game, make them chase me from three possessions. I get all that, but why are you running a wide receiver screen on third down that hasn't worked all season? It's gotten dropped or yeah. dropped. They've dropped the receiver seemingly every time. If you know you're going to kick a field goal at that point, right, if you're not going to willing to go for it on fourth and one from the one-yard line, I just feel like you you go for it there, and if you don't, you better throw the ball into the end zone on that third down. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think when they've tried those wide receiver screens, those tunnel screens throughout the year this year, they have not had a lot of success. So it that was kind of – it just felt like a play call that they were setting up going for it on fourth down because they felt like, hey, I, if I don't get it here, I have another down. But that wasn't the case. They kicked the field goal on that. So I agree. They should have a, a, a better play call in that situation. Really go for the end zone. You know, throw a fade, you know, whatever. Just, you know, give one of your guys a chance. And, and if you don't get it there, fine. Kick the field goal, get the points. Then I understand it. Well, and the other thing was, is like it, there was a third string quarterback in at that point, right? So maybe you're just right. feeling like your defense, you should feel really good about it. But Drew Locke comes in on the next drive and they go 10 plays, 74 yards, get it down to the Chargers one yard line. But the Chargers came through on fourth down once again. I mean, just a huge game changing play right here. You're up 10 to zero at this point. And then what did the Broncos try to do on fourth down? And you stuffed them right to get them to that point. You stopped three plays before that within the eight-yard line. That was really yeah. stingy by the Chargers defense. A great play. And they tried to run the Philly special, the one the Chargers got with the two-point conversion to Justin <laughs> Herbert. They yeah. tried to run that reverse. Chargers really efforted this play, right, into yeah, an inco- or into a, not a touchdown because as Nazir Adderley sees what's happening, he's coming from the backside, sees the pitch, really heads up play and then just closes like a heat seeking missile. Oh, man, Doesn't exploded. give Kendall Hinton any time to throw the ball. Somehow he barely gets it off. Drew Locke picks it up off the turf basically. And Joey Bosa with the effort play comes and crushes him on the one yard line to get the ball back for the chargers. That was literally huge off the turf because the ball hit the ground. Yeah. I mean, I, I that I, I just back on, on, on replay. If you go back and watch that play, he definitely dropped the ball. That that should not have been a completion at all. Right. That should have been the end of the play. But Joey Bosa, you know, you, you played until the end of the whistle, and we know that that's what Joey Bosa does. And he obviously he's never going to take an opportunity not to lay a hit on a quarterback because that's what Joey Bosa does. So he gets that opportunity and he prevents the touchdown. Yeah, and he'd already put him out of the game for a little bit earlier exactly. on, right? On a hit where, like, Drew Locke was trying to scramble. He gets held up, and Joey Bosa finished the play in a very clean manner, right? Yeah. And that's what you have to do to quarterbacks, and that's what you hate to see happen to Justin Herbert when he, you know, tries to scramble. But just a huge play right there to keep the momentum in the Chargers' favor. I mean, that would have made it set 10-7. to 7. Who knows where the game goes from there? But after that, the Chargers frustrated me because they go three and out. They run the ball on third and two when they had already kind of stopped being able to run the ball super effectively at that point. And then they luck out because what happens, they punt the ball from their own end zone, which scared me as well. And the Broncos muff the punt, and which is just a huge turn. I mean, there's not many charger of them. Yeah, it was something the Chargers would do. But the Chargers did come back and take advantage of it. And that was the great thing is I'm always a big guy. You have to capitalize when a good break happens for you, put other teams away. And they did. They go 11 plays, 49 yards down the field. And Keenan Allen gets the eight-yard touchdown from Justin Herbert. Herbert does a great job looking off the safeties to the left, comes back to the right, finds Keenan Allen with a laser beam. And the Chargers go up 17-0 to before half, which was just a huge swing. Yeah, the, the, they did a great job of uh, maximizing on that momentum. And Keenan Allen runs a beautiful kind of corkscrew route where he you know, starts to the outside, you know, mo- maneuvers right back on the inside. And, you know, there's nobody in the NFL that's a more pal- polished route runner than Keenan Allen is. And he shows it again on this play with a beautiful throw to match by Justin Herbert and the Chargers get in the end zone for a big score. Yeah, and I mean, that, you had everything going for you at that point. It was 17-0, to zero, but... Of course, it's the Chargers, and you know they can't have just a flawless perfect. You know, I blame myself for this because I might have started tweeting 
Chargers pitching a shutout in the first half defensively. <laughs> There's 14 <laughs> seconds left in the first half at that point. The Broncos get a touchback. Joey Bosa whiffs on a sack that ends up going for 24 yards to Melvin oh. Gordon on a catch and run. Bad angle. Shouldn't have gone for that much. And then after that, you give up an easy eight-yard completion to set up a 61-yard field goal attempt from Brandon McManus, who makes it and obviously gets the Broncos on the board to make it 17-3. to The only thing, I, the only problem I have with that was I think the Chargers should have kicked off there uh, just because their kickoff yes. unit has been really good. I think they've been averaging like opponents to go 15 yards or something on returns, which is ridiculous. They've had so many good plays in that unit. And the other thing is you take clock, right? If you kick it short – you want them to return it. If they return it, maybe they run five, six seconds on the clock, and they're starting that drive with nine seconds remaining. Instead, it's 14. You should have never let it happen. But we're nitpicking, you know, a 34 to 13 blowout win by the Chargers <laughs> as well. But these are things that you have to do down the stretch, right? These are yeah. mistakes you potentially can't make next week against the Las Vegas Raiders. So that part was annoying. But overall, a dominant first half for the Chargers where they're getting turnovers and big returns by special teams. You're getting fourth down stops by the defense and the offense does enough and puts up more than they put up the entire game the first time these two teams matched up. But there was more to come and the biggest fireworks came in the second half. So we're going to get into that. But I also need to tell you guys about an app that if you don't have it, I don't know what you're doing because it's the Get Upside app and it's something that all Chargers fans need to know about because it's an app it's going to save you money at the gas pump. You guys need to download the app right now, whether it's the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Wherever you get your apps from, you can find the Get Up Side app. And what it's going to do is it's going to save you money because my listeners are making up to $0.25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Up Side app and use the promo code TOUCHDOWN, all caps, one word, and you get a bonus $0.25 cents back per gallon on your first fill up. That means you're saving up to $0.50 cents on your first fill-up. Take 50 cents off the number you see at the gas station, which if you're in California like me, is going to be a very ridiculous number. And there's no downside with Get Upside. I mean, you can get the money put right into your bank account. You can get it cashed out on Amazon and other big brand gift cards. And I mean, there's just nothing better than saving money on gas, which is something nobody wants to pay for anyways. And if you download the Get Upside app and use that promo code to touchdown, you can save up to 25 cents per gallon per fill-up. And you can even get up to 50 cents back on your first fill up. There's really no reason not to get it, guys. Make sure you get, make sure you guys are getting the get up sign up so you guys can start saving money at the gas pump. But don't forget to use the promo code at touchdown. All right, David. Well, there's definitely fireworks in the second half I talked about. But thank you guys again for making us your first listen. I appreciate that. And especially thank you. You know, after the, you know, how much you guys supported us last week after a crazy loss to the Texans. We really appreciate you guys being here for all the ups and downs because it's definitely been a roller coaster of a season. Starting the new year off with us, we really appreciate it. And the yes. Chargers are one and zero in the new year, which is a great thing to say because they're racing all the other baby. Bad yeah, exactly. So, the Chargers one and zero in January, and it came because of their performance in the second half. Because there's no lead, you know, a fourteen point lead isn't necessarily safe. Plus, the Broncos had a chance to kind of double dip, right? You gave up that field goal. Now they have a chance to come out after halftime, put a touchdown potentially up, and just like that, you go from being up seventeen to zero. All of a sudden, it's a 17 to get 10 game, and we've seen it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we've seen the Chargers do that already this season. But the defense came through in a big way on that first drive by the Broncos. They cut that momentum short. You know, you hear the uh, sideline reporters like, you know, the Broncos really felt that, you know, field goal right before halftime really juiced the guys up. And it's like, okay, well, I couldn't tell because they went out and went five plays, 22 yards, and had to punt. And that was, a, I think, a big swing in the Chargers' momentum in a favorable way, especially. It was huge. Yeah, and then when you come back and you score, because the Chargers go 14 plays, 75 yards, and get a field goal again. And this one hurt because you had a first and goal from the one-yard line, and you end up with three points. And I know, I'm nitpicking. It's 34 to 13. It can't happen. The first play gets blown up for like a four-yard loss, and now you're changing everything. Offensive line guy. I mean, it was a jailbreak play by the Broncos. And you had such a nice play because on third down, Austin Eckler breaks the tackle of Justin Simmons. Barely keeps his knee up off the turf and goes 40 yards catch and run. Great individual effort by a great player. You get down to the one-yard line. You go backwards, and you get three points out of it. But it goes back to what Brandon Staley was saying, David, where it's like he wanted possessions. At that point, right, they're up by 14. He's going to make it 20-3 to three to make it you know, a three-possession game and a 17-point game at that point. But you can't have that when you're on one-yard line and you have a first and goal. Yeah, I mean – you. You understand getting points, and and Josh I get Palmer the, also dropped it, a fireball from Justin Herbert too. Too fast, still should catch it. The whole thing we've done it a million times. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you're a professional wide receiver, catch the football. It was hot. That, it was really the, hot. 
It, yeah, it was, but you know, catch the ball. That's what you yeah. get paid to do. He beat Patrick Sertan on that one. I mean, he I think he's for sure scoring if he catches it. Oh yeah. Yeah, he, he definitely did. No question about that. Um, but the big problem here is the red zone offense. Is you know, you get down there, you have a great drive to get down there and put yourself in position, but yet again, you're not able to call a play that results in a touchdown. And when you go up against these teams, you know, whether it's the Raiders or whether you are blessed enough to to get into the playoffs, your margin for error, when you get into those situations, you have to be able to score touchdowns. There is no other solution. You cannot trade field goals for touchdowns in the playoffs. You have to score your points. So if the Chargers are doing this now, they have to eliminate that going into when the games really, really matter. Yeah. I mean, they, they will. They'll have to execute better than that. And the Broncos... I mean, even with the players they're missing, it was still the number one scoring defense in the NFL. They make things really, really tough for you when you get down in the red zone and the sh- field gets shrunken like that. I mean, we talked about it with Longdon Broncos. That's one of their biggest strengths. And they're still a very, very well coached defense. We still, I mean, we're still talking about Kyle Four and Pat Sertan the second and, you know, Justin Simmons back there in that secondary. So there's some oh, dangerous yeah. dudes as well as some guys, you know, that wouldn't be out there in a normal situation. But you just want to get seven there, and then the Broncos come and get it right back, right? But the Chargers get a huge swing because after a Noah Fant 35-yard catch and run, which was really infuriating because it's more bad angles by the Chargers, a short pass that turns into a big run, similar reminiscent to the Kansas City game with Travis Kelsey. I mean, just bad angles on athletic tight ends. Third and 12. Derwin James absolutely destroys Drew Locke, but he jumps off sides. They call him for a roughing the passer. I know David was upset about that. It was very, I mean, and I know, I mean, it was a bad call. On my, I mean, they're going to call it always. Like It's just so soft. It's just it's dumb. It's so soft. I mean, it's just two-hand touch on the quarterback. When Drew Locke is begging for it, too. I mean, yeah, like, of course he not is. the hit, but the flag. I, yeah, the Academy Award for, <laughs> oh, my God. I got Look at my far. face. He poked me. Oh, my God. Yeah, but cool. no. Stop. Please. It went. I mean, I was upset before I even hit him. Just, got, I mean, the the hit disrupted the play, right? And it would have forced them to have to attempt a field goal. I don't think they're going for it there on fourth and twelve, if that was the situation. But you end up going offsides. You end up getting the rough in the pass call, and you just can't have that in those situations, obviously. But he was trying to make a play, and he ended up making a good play. Just jumped offsides before he did it, and then this is where the charge actually caught the break, though, because obviously that wasn't the break. Melvin Gordon gets in on fourth and one. The Chargers have another pretty sturdy stand right there on the goal line. First and goal from the eight-yard line. You get another stop. You force them to in fourth and goal. And you actually had good penetration on that fourth down run by Melvin Gordon, which was tough because he ends up getting in. But they call an illegal formation, which the Chargers know all about having touchdowns taken off the board by illegal formations. And then they end up settling for a field goal. Soft by Vic Fangio there. I mean, it's five yards. The game's getting shorter, you know, so that's a big stop by the Chargers defense just to even get them in that situation. And then they shot themselves in the foot. And then after that, I tweeted, I said, it'd be really nice for the Chargers here, you know, up 20 to six to go put it away because we've seen them have so many opportunities, right? Where they're up a good amount and they have a chance to really kind of end things and they don't do it. Yeah. Andre Roberts took it out of the offense's hands because he took the kickoff back 101 yards. You can see this smile. For a touchdown, first charger to take a kickback for a touchdown since Michael Spurlock spent part of a season with the Chargers in 2012. I mean, that's a name drop if I've ever heard one, David. Yeah. But the vision, the acceleration, the burst all on display. And he's broken so many and almost broken so many touchdowns, you know, and like yeah. has had so many 40 plus yard returns. You felt it coming. And all of a sudden, since Andre Roberts has been here, he's been at all pro form again doing special, special things with a Chargers return game that was averaging 16 yards by four different dudes when he showed up. The the special teams unit, the return game had zero juice. They had no speed. They had nobody that was back there that you were scared about. There was no team that was scared of any returner the Chargers were putting out there, whether it was punt returner or kick returner, until Andre Roberts showed up on the scene and completely changed that from the jump. This is an experienced kick returner. He came in here, worked with his blockers, said, Hey, this is how I like to have things blocked. This is what I'm looking at. This is how I'm seeing it. And we've seen that manifest itself in this special teams unit since his arrival. He's had the big returns and they've really helped set up the chargers offense. And you got to really feel good for him after, especially against the chiefs where he just one slip away from getting a, a touchdown in that situation This time, the blocking sets up perfectly. 
he hits that that angle across the middle of the field and he turns on the Jets and he is absolutely gone. And I want to remind you guys, this guy is 33 years old, but that did not matter on this one. This guy has plenty of speed and he showed it to the tune of 101 kickoff return touchdown. Yeah, and I mean, it was always surprising that he was available. Like The Texans weren't doing anything right with him, really. Yeah. But like he was so good for the Bills, literally leading the NFL in kickoff return yards. So like to have him fall into your lap in the offseason where you kind of really failed to address that position, maybe you're expecting Joe Reed to be that guy. But like this dude is that guy. Oh, you yeah. re-sign him the day after, you know, re-sign him now, re-sign him whenever you want because this dude is the best returner for the Chargers since – Darren Sproles, me and you it's were talking about deal. that. We were saying that before this game. We were saying he's yeah. probably the best return man since Darren Sproles for the Chargers. And he's been the best kickoff returner in the league since he's come to the Chargers. And he deserved that touchdown because the dude has just been ridiculous, has handled all the punts, hasn't had a bad moment yet with the Chargers, except for the game he wasn't able to be out there. And that hurt the Chargers. But, like, there's literally nothing this guy hasn't done for you. And it's just so cool to have – your special teams be a weapon for your team instead of a hindrance. And that's just yes. been a story for a long time. But after that, the Broncos end up turning the ball over on downs. The game was pretty much already over, but obviously with the Chargers never over till it's over kind of thing. And then the Chargers put the cherry on top because on their next offensive drive after the turnover on downs, they go three plays, 52 yards. And I love this, David, because on third and short, they took it deep. We've seen so many times where teams are sitting on their short passes, quick passes from the Chargers on third down in those situations, and the Chargers flip the script on this one. Mike Williams gets in for the 45-yard touchdown, a beautiful bomb by Justin Herbert to break Phillip Rivers' record, and that was pretty much all she wrote at that point. That made it 34-6, to and at that point, the game was over. Yeah, and I think the Chargers did a great job of kind of lulling the, the Denver Broncos to sleep before yeah. that, too, because they did a lot of short throws where they were attacking the perimeters, just trying to get those easy com completions, get the ball out of Justin Herbert's hands quickly, keep moving down the football field, and then they hit him with the big shot. And I just love the fact that Justin Herbert gets the record with one of those big, sexy touchdown throws yeah. that I think that has really made him famous in his second year in the league, just, you know, you saw the, you know, the 60 plus yarder against the giants and some of the big throws in his rookie year. I think that's just been who Justin Herbert is. He's a guy who's going to be able to bring those big plays. And I think it's, it's very appropriate that the touchdown pass that breaks the record is another one of those beautiful bombs by Justin Herbert. Yeah, it was it was fitting for sure that that's the way that the touchdown was you know record was broken, and it's also fitting that he gets it in sixteen games. So 16. it's not you know it, it, that record will always stand as far as he did it in sixteen. And like I don't think this is the most touchdown pass that Justin Herbert's going to have in a season either, which yeah. is the other crazy thing. So I don't even know you know how many years he'll have stacked on top of that potentially because the sky is obviously the limit with this kid. But let's not take for granted you know how good he's been so far like the dude has been special even on a game where it's kind of okay I mean the rest of the team did so much they only needed him to be you know pretty good in this game and he had a QBR of 90.6 so like that's obviously saying something there but the Chargers after that give up a garbage time touchdown and then they end up finishing the ball with their starting offense on the field they run 10 plays go six and a half minutes or six minutes 50 seconds to end the game there which was nice to see that just mentally finishing the game with the offense on the field, also wrapping up the first time in 11 weeks that the Chargers didn't give up 20 points defensively. I know that probably definitely meant something to Brandon Staley at that point because they ended up giving it up in the Giants game very, very late, onside kicks and all that kind of stuff. But just a totally dominant win. And, like, that's the thing. is Yeah, it's just the Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos had COVID issues for sure. I mean, they were not a full, you know, fully staffed team in this one. But – when does that matter to the Chargers in the past, right? Just Or to anyone else in the NFL. They're all 100%. dealing with it. They don't yeah, care. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, the Chargers obviously, you know, took their lumps last week. So, that – it was just huge to see the Chargers go do it like this, knowing that they could take their playoff control back in this game. They went out there and did it and, you know, set up the biggest game of the season, probably, you know, the biggest game between the Chargers and the Raiders in 50 years or something. Like, I mean, I don't even – in my lifetime, this would be the biggest Chargers-Raiders game that there's been, which is a crazy thing to say. And we get to enjoy it all week because this is all you can ask for, a golden opportunity to beat the Raiders and make it into the playoffs. So to make sure you're here with us all week to check all of that out, we'll talk about the playoffs tomorrow and the chances, you know, and what it means to have one game 
to get in and all of that. But to make sure you don't miss it, make sure to subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel if you haven't already, and to go follow the show wherever you get your podcasts from, whether that's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever, and make sure to rate and review the show if you like it as well. We really appreciate that. You can also get at us on our Chargers voicemail line or Locked On Chargers voicemail line. The number there is 323-524-7924 if you want to give us your reactions to the big win for the Chargers this week. And you can also find the show every day on all of our social media. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and Dave Drogmeyer on Twitter at Drotalk SDs. You, Drotalk SD. you can also find the show on our new Instagram page at Locked On Chargers on Instagram and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page as well. But what a game. What a win for the Chargers. So glad we get to be here with you guys on Victory Monday. Thank you again for making this your first listen and have a super fun week. Ready to have a super fun week with you guys this one. So you're excited to be back here tomorrow with you guys. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.